Hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. And today we're going to talk a little bit about buzzwords and coverage. All right, kind of help your kids, uh, you know, figure out where they belong in, in pattern matching coverages. When we talk about uh, playing our, our two Raider, our palms concept, uh, it's a pattern matching concept that is, is basically, you know, you're going to decipher the coverage based on a deployment of the receiver. So you're going to talk to your kids about numbering receivers one, two, and three, and then they're going to talk to them about the final one, two, three, and how they match those routes. And what's going to happen is their coverage assignments are going to be based on things that happen from the receivers on offense. So one of the things that I'm always trying to, trying to find a way to do, and now, you know, this is the third high school I've been at in the last five years, all right, so I've, I've had three head coaching jobs in my high school career, and each time you change high schools and you deal with different kids, you're trying to figure out how your kids learn best. Or when, anytime you get new kids from a junior high, even if you've been at the same high school for 15 or 20 years, if you get new kids from a junior high, you have to kind of decipher how they learn and, and what the best way is to give them information that they need to know. So when we're talking about playing our two reader, our pattern match coverage, we, we try to use some buzzwords to help the kids a little bit, and then we try to... Um, come up with some concrete definitions so that the kids can understand when we talk about a scenario all right whoever you were reading what did that player do and then we try and give them some concrete definitions using simple words to say all right did he do one of these three things or did he do one of these two things all right and then you know for the underneath guys we try to give them very simple buzzwords for them to understand what their drop is going to be so that they can understand how to match the different patterns, all right? So the first, the first two buzzwords that we use, all right, and, and this, one of these techniques I actually uh, got from a clinic that I went to, and I think it's pretty good, so we're going to apply it with our guys. We're going to talk to the strong safety, and we're going to tell him that he is a curl pull player, and we're going to talk to the Mike linebacker, okay, and I added this in for our, our three droppers or our inside linebackers. I, I'm going to talk to them and tell them that they are hook pull players. All right. And what that basically means is, is in the two read or, or palms coverage, your strong safety is a guy that has to swing deep of three so that if three works out with width, he has to, has to carry that route of number three. And he can never be out leveraged by number three because if one and two were to run off and three went – on a swing or a shoot or he went to the flat, the corner and the safety would be run off and if three gets to the flat, he out leverages the defense. So the strong safety is a guy that's got to relate to that. So we had always talked to our strong safeties about, hey, two doesn't cross your face, three doesn't out leverage you. And, and, you know, and trying to find a simpler way to tell them and a simpler technique that they can, uh, that they can use on the football field, what we started to do is we started to tell the strong safety, listen, you're a curl pull player. Now, eventually we will get to them understanding how to avoid two crossing your face, keeping two outside of you, getting to one yard inside, one yard under the hip of two, making or defining the read for the free safety and helping the free safety out. We're going to talk to them about those things, but originally we're going to talk to them and say you're a curl pull player. And what I mean by that is we're going to give him a landmark for a curl drop and we're going to tell him that he's a curl player unless three pulls him to the flat. Okay, so you've got number one here, you've got number two here, you've got number three here. So we're going to tell him he's a curl pull player. Drop to the curl unless three pulls you to the flat. Okay, if three doesn't pull you to the flat, then you're basically going to be a curl dropper. And we're going to keep it that simple, all right, for that player, and then we're going to work on getting them to the curl and then squared up to the quarterback and then melting and pulling a string off the vision of the quarterback and the front shoulder of the quarterback so we can get more breaks on the ball and help stay in the curl window and then maybe defend all right, that, that, that out window from there depending on, on the route combinations and what the quarterback's looking at. So we're going to talk to the inside guy, the Mike or the Will, whoever it may be, and, and right now currently in the offseason we're, we're trying to teach all of our guys how to play all these spots so that they have a better understanding of the coverage. So we're going to teach the Mike inside backer that he's a hook, curl, a hook pull player. And what we mean by that is we want his landmark to be a hook drop, all right? And he's only going to pull, all right, to the curl if three brings him there. 
So if three releases, all right, wider, then he will pull his drop out, all right, towards the towards the curl. And what's going to end up happening is he'll end up having to find and match that new number three, all right. So we've started with curl pull and hook pull with with our underneath guys, okay. And then the next thing, all right, the next thing we went to is is we talked to them about. Is the, is the release of three wide or is the release of three tight? All right, and I tried to focus on those two words only, okay, and getting our guys to understand, all right, the release of three is kind of going to dictate your drop, all right, so we're going to match our drops based off the release of three, and we're going to work on two simple things that you're going to be able to tell me, all right, I don't need to know the route of three yet. I don't want to know the exact route of three. You're going to tell me whether three went wide or three went tight. All right, and that's the only thing that we're focusing on right now because once they can tell me whether three went wide or three went tight, all right, now they can tell me what their drop should have been. Okay, so if three goes wide, we know that the curl pull player is going to be pulled, okay, a little bit wider to the flat. And we know that the hook player is going to be pulled a little bit wider to the curl, and then we're going to have to pattern match the routes based on that. Okay, so if we know three is wide and they can tell me that three is wide, then the curl pull player should be able to tell me that he has, all right, pulled or pushed his drop to the flat, and he and the hook player has pulled or pushed his drop, okay, to the curl area. All right, a lot of guys with three on that side and palms or two read, they'll make a push alert. So this guy will alert to the mic and he'll say, hey, alert, push, alert, push. That means if three is wide, we're going to have to push the coverage. Okay, so what we started using was hook, cur hook pull, curl pull to tell our guys, listen, that's your drop unless three pulls you, all right, to another drop. And then we talked about tight releases and we said if three was tight and he released inside, all right, tight to the tackle box, then you're going to stay a hook player and you're going to stay a curl player and then we're going to relate all right, off the vision of the quarterback, and we're going to play off the vision of the quarterback. All right, so if three was tight, we were going to stay a hook player and a curl player. There was no need for us to go anywhere else, and then we were going to play all the routes off the vision of the quarterback. All right, so we had hook pull, curl pull, and then we had wide tight. All right, and then we started talking to the corners and the free safeties with number two, and we started to define what is vertical, what is out, and what is under. Okay, so we started to define with our guys what's a vertical route, what's an out route, what's an under route, all right? And when you do that in your defense or in the, in the palms coverage, that can be whatever you choose, all right, for it to be. For us, we want vertical to be defined as past linebacker level or the strong safety level still working to the opposite goal line. So in other words, shoulders aren't turned facing the sideline. All right, shoulders are working towards the opposite goal line, all right, and as they're working towards the opposite goal line, the route has become deeper, not the original alignment. Wherever the strong safety drops to, that route has to get deeper than him to be vertical, all right, and we use that definition with our corners and our safeties, and we want everybody to know, okay? However you define vertical is up to you, but I think it's important that your kids understand how you define it, because that's how you're going to play the coverage. So... Anything that goes outside by number two, underneath that strong safety, we declare an out release. Okay, so we're going to tell our corner that he is going to come off on any outside release by number two. Okay, and then we're going to define an outside release as a release that works out to the sideline underneath linebacker level. So that they now know whether it's negative bubble, shoot, Five step out, if that route occurs underneath the level of the linebackers, that is going to be considered an out route, okay? An under route is a route that occurs underneath the strong safety, but it must work towards the other sideline. And what we tell our safety is, can you see numbers or an ear hole? All right, if you can still see a face mask in numbers, even though he went under your strong safety, we still have to honor that as vertical because you'll get that trick release where they go under and then climb back vertical and they try to get your free safety to get his eyes over to number one. Okay, So under for us is a release that is under the strong safety or linebacker level but has we can see an ear hole or a shoulder and that route is progressing across the field to the sideline. That route is not progressing 
all right, up the field vertically. So once we define vertical out and under, all right, what we can then do with our guys is we can then talk to them and say, hey, what did number two do? All right, and then what we, we, we try to get to a point where our guys ba basically very simply say, did two go vertical, did two go out, or did two go under? That's all I need to know. All right, I don't want you to try and describe the scenario where you say, well, two, he went three steps and then he took a step in and he worked back outside. Just tell me what he did. In our definitions, did he go vertical, did he go out, did he go under, so that we can then declare how we should have played the coverage based on the releases. If he went vertical, by our definition, the free safety's got to match that route. Okay? If he went out, by our definition, the corner's going to end up playing it, and the free safety's got to work to one. If he went under, by our definition, we're going to zone our, our safety in the quarter. All right? We're going to try and help one on the post, but we're also going to try and have eyes backside for the all right, shallow dig or all those dagger combinations when you get an under route with a possible over coming from the other side. So we choose in our coverage, when we get an under release, we choose to just zone the quarter with our free safety. We don't rob number one right away in that coverage because a couple of things that have hurt us in the past is the under route and then the dig coming from that side, which if we had a safety on that side, it should also be played by him. It should also have help from underneath players. All right, but we'll get that combination under and then the dig or we'll get an under-release that then works vertical, all right? We see two go under the strong safety. We turn and get our eyes to one, and then two snaps back vertical right down the middle of the field. Okay, so that's why we have cho we've chosen on the under route, all right, that, that when, we, when he goes under, we decide to zone the quarter. Gives us help on the post, but it also gives us help if we get anything coming from the other side. And that's just a choice that we decided to make. That's not... You don't have to play that co the coverage that way. You can play the coverage however you want to, all right? But the bottom line is you have to have a definition of vertical out and under. So we start with curl pull and hook pull as the buzzwords for the underneath players. We start with wide and tight, all right, as the buzzwords for the release of number three. And we start with vertical out under as the buzzwords for the release of number two. Now that we are all on the same page, now we can understand those releases, and when we get them, all right, we can start to understand where we should be and why we should be there. I'll give you a perfect example of what ends up happening and what our, the mistake our guys make. All right, we get a simple curl, flat, spot combination. Okay, and every time with new players or when players get back on the field, when we play our two read or our palms, our strong safety, for some reason, wants to widen out with this shoot route. Okay, probably because they get their eyes there and, and, and they see that there's nobody in the flat so they think they have to cover that. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go back to the strong safety and say, what was the release of three? Okay, based on that, they ought to tell me that three release tight. Okay, if three release tight, what's your drop? I'm a curl dropper, coach. Okay, if three release tight and you're a curl dropper, what are you doing outside with number two? Okay, that's the first thing that we got to understand. So now in that combination, the strong safety should be sitting in the curl window. The corner, depending on how aggressively you choose to play it, all right, is either going to drive off on number two or he's going to sit in a void, all right, where he's going to sit down and wait, all right, for the ball to come out and then drive two. There's a lot of different ways to play it. And your safety should be working over the top to number one, okay? Your Mike linebacker gets a tight drop, so he should be a hook drop. So you should have a hook dropper because three's tight, a curl dropper because three's tight. The corner will eventually come off on two, depending on how you trigger it. The safety should be working to defend the vertical and the post of number one. So now when you get that curl slide combination, you should have an underneath curl player. But I can tell you right now, when we work with our guys in that coverage, our strong safety always wants to widen out there and we run right past the curl all the time. So what we've started doing is we've started using the buzzwords curl pull, hook pull, wide tight, vertical out, under. Now the corner and the safety in this deal should be able to tell me what was the release of two. Alright? Both players better tell me that the release of two was out because it went outside underneath the strong safety. That's all they have to tell me. Now that they told me the release of two is out, okay, now we can understand how the rotation of the coverage should look because the release of two was out in our definition. Okay, so hopefully some of those buzzwords and definitions can help you guys when you're playing uh, um, pattern match coverages. If you guys are interested in pattern match coverages or split field coverages, 
Uh, I have a course coming out with Coach Tube. It's the first course that I've done with Coach Tube. It is coming out sometime in the next three to five days, okay? And it has on it, uh, for the first time, it has a PowerPoint presentation. It has PDF uh, files from my playbook that have drawings on it. It's got over 80 minutes of video discussion with me on the whiteboard talking about different split field coverages. And then for the first time, because I can never do this on YouTube because all the videos I do on YouTube are free, for the first time it's got about 16 minutes of game clips with me going through different split field coverages. And if you know how I operate, it's me going through the right and the wrong of the split field coverages. I don't put up perfect clips. I put up clips that show you where we were good, where we were bad, what we could do different. I show you the difference between our, our base 3 by one and then the check we made in 3 by one I show you how we played a, a 21 personnel set, and in the 21 personnel set, I show you how we fit the run wrong. I talk about how the run should have been fitted, how we could have fixed it the way we fit it, okay, and then what we have to work on to fit that run better. Okay, so for all you guys that have been following me on YouTube for the last five years, uh, I greatly appreciate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description of this video. And if you click on that link, it's going to be 60% off the CoachTube course All right, that, that I have up there. You're going to get 60% off of that CoachTube course. So you'll get the, the full CoachTube course for 60% off All right, if you click on that link and you go to the CoachTube site. And then again, hopefully if you're interested, Pattern Match Splitfield. Over 80 minutes of video with PDFs and PowerPoints and game clips, which is something I've never done before uh, on YouTube because all the stuff I do on YouTube is free, so I can't get that much involved with what we're doing. All right, so again, guys, I appreciate you following, as always. All right, guys that came to clinics and watched me in Orlando, Tampa, all right, I appreciate that. And start looking for stuff coming out with CoachTube now. I partnered with CoachTube, so there's going to be some coaching videos coming out on uh, CoachTube and my YouTube followers will always get great discounts on the CoachTube stuff. All right, guys, so again, hope it helps. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. All right, check out GameStrat for the most advanced and the fastest replay system available out there. We will be using the GameStrat um, replay system next year and also just play football for digital software and playbook solutions, guys. I'll check you out next time. Thanks.